Praise God, praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I pray that you guys are having a blessed day in the Lord. Um, I pray that you are walking in power, in word. Come on, somebody, hallelujah, in movement. Um, so I have a serious matter. Um, people were sending me videos about this woman talking about um, voodoo spells. That's a given. And to be honest with you, and not trying to be funny, they hide in plain sight, meaning that how she knows so much about it because honestly whoever she is i really don't know her name i didn't really look at the video because as soon as, as soon as i looked at the picture i was like okay she she doing witchcraft so she probably was one of the ones who helped them do it okay so i want to talk to you about everybody's going crazy well i rebuke that because we got to watch words popeye's chicken and i'm just gonna stick to the subject chemical warfare from the elite let me tell you something and i'm gonna be very transparent like i always am I used to love Popeye's. So that was one of my first jobs when I was 16 years old. And thing, the, first of all, the taste has changed. First of all, you y'all know that that Caucasian people own it. That black lady. Um, the rumor is that most of the ideas and most of the um, recipes were stolen. And y'all already know who they were stolen from. Because I don't want nobody to say, oh, she's trying to be racist. It's just the truth. Um, we were slaves, our ancestors, and a lot of them, even the lady that um, actually brought up Coca-Cola. And, you know, they kind of like, oh, let me see it. And then they took it, and that's what they did. So let me stick to the subject at hand. I want to read to you about chemical warfare. Following the release of chemical weapon, food and water may become contaminated. In addition, chemicals may deliberately be introduced into the food chain, notice what he said, food chain, or water supply. The nerve agent VX is less soluble but more persistent, breaking down into a chemical that is toxic by ingestion, but you don't really get to taste it because of the sauces that they may put on it. Uh, do y'all notice the water tastes different? I mean, everybody should notice that the water, even the bottled water. There's some bottled water I taste. I'd be like, oh my God, you know. Um, praise God, praise God. Let me continue. Let me ask. Let me tell you. So these are the things that are used in chemical warfare. Mustard gas, first used during World War One. Mustard gas is a colorless, odorless liquid at room temperature and causes extreme blistering. Second, nerve gas, the most deadly. Of all chemical warfare agents, one drop or more of nerves gas can kill you in a minute. Okay, then Lewis tights, phosgene, cyanogen chloride, hydrogen cyanide. Now remember the guy that I actually put a video on, which I do not condone Muslim activity. I am not Muslim, praise God, but he was right because knows what I say, cyanogen chloride. Because one thing about it, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go check something out. I, I'm gonna fat check it. I'm, a, I'm a Ask the Holy Spirit. So what am I saying? It was a sad day for Apostle Deanna Dixon when all that stuff started happening with the chicken sandwich because, you know, I was like, okay, God, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to God and ask God, God, what's going on? He said, you know what's going on? Chemical warfare. And I was really hurt. I have not eaten that chicken sandwich. And let me tell you how serious I am. Those that follow me, you know my spirit. You know how I roll. I don't even know if I'm going to eat chicken again, which actually impacts the way that I cook. So now I'm thinking, God, I don't know if I could do this anymore because I don't want to introduce anything to, into somebody's system that have already been tainted. What am I saying? If you looked at the videos and I, I dare you, I challenge you to go out there, do all you got to do is Google. They got everything. Let me tell you something. They hide in plain sight. The elite got all of it before you, but most of you don't care. The second part is you, you're not going to take the um, time to Google. You're not going to take the time to actually research what they're talking about. Let me tell you something. These people are not playing. You playing. You playing. These people are not playing. And I, I'm, I'm going to say some things because I have to on here. Praise God. Praise God. You ever notice the term how they fatten you up for the kill, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth? America is the one is the one country that has the most obesity. And I'm not trying to be funny because I am still, I'm fasting, losing the weight myself. So trust me, I'm not trying to mock anyone. But I'm going to be honest with you, especially Christians. Because we don't drink, we don't smoke, we gorge. Let me tell you something, and I'm so serious. I was talking to my sister last night, Prophetess Latronica Dixon, and I was telling her, and she was laughing. I said, I am following my papers, divorce papers from Popeyes and Chicken. I'm not playing. Hold on, it's not just about that. 
everything before you eat. Please, people, pray. This is not a game. Don't be so, and I'll have to say it, don't be so greedy or so eager. Pray. Father God, if there's anything in this, please take it out. Take out all the impurities in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's why he says pray and sanctify it. This is true. I truly believe that's and, and y'all just love that sandwich i mean people doing so many videos on it and i mean do y'all understand what state we in now i'm gonna tell you what really hurt my heart they i mean social media been blowing up everybody taking advantage of it you know to get hits everybody won't talk about popeye's chicken and really it's just to get likes and hits on youtube you know that but what if we actually chase god the way they, they stood in line for that chicken sandwich Churches don't even have, and I'm not saying all churches are bad. Churches don't even have a lineup like that. Churches, I mean, I'm just saying. I, do do y'all understand where we at worldly? Do y'all understand how, how it looks to God? Do you understand what is happening? I, 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 I feel a power. I'm finna, I'm finna get into this thing because y'all don't understand me apparently. But I'm a, I, I, I'm going to do what God told me to do. Let me tell you something. That's why it says in Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. America have become Babylon. What is Babylon? Fallen state. After food, after money, after sex, after drugs, after a feeling, after feeling good, entertainment. Don't you understand what the enemy has done? The enemy has camouflaged everything. Everything that God made good, he has turned into an enemy. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Let me tell you what God said. God was saying, and I got a couple of subjects that I'm just going to put it all up. I'm going to mix it since y'all like food. I'm going to put a gumbo. I'm going to fix y'all a gumbo. Chef Didi going to fix y'all a gumbo, a.k.a. Apostle Dana Dixon, okay? Let me tell y'all something. I couldn't understand why God been speaking to me so, I'm talking about stern. He said, Deanna, I need you in shape. I need you to get ready. You get ready to run. You ask for this. You beg for this. You pray for this. It's not just about money. It's not just about success. He says it's about my people. I thought I was done with prophetic classes. I don't do something just for money. God said, I need you back. I said, God, what's going on? He said, they're not teaching it right. He said, they're making money off of it because everybody want a word from me. He said, the reason why they're seeking for a word because they, they don't know me. You see, in order to have a relationship with God, you have to spend time with God. Just like if you spend time with a man or a woman, you can't. You don't get to know nobody until you spend time with them. Time in his word. Time to see how he operates. Time to learn his voice. Because I'm going to tell you about the enemy. The enemy mimics God. So it sounds like God, but then I'm going to tell you, I'm a whole prophetess, and yet I always get confirmation. Especially if I've made a mistake in the past. Oh, come on, somebody, don't play games. God, I, I'm not going to move again until I hear double confirmation, triple confirmation. It does not matter. Can I tell y'all something? These people already want to depopulate the earth. What is the best way to do it? Through food and water resource. And because something you wouldn't even notice. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm very transparent. Yesterday after church, because I visited this church here, we went and we stopped by this seafood place, Chinese seafood place, okay? And I noticed I had ordered the lemon pepper wings. I'm not even going to front because y'all need to know this stuff. I started, I didn't feel well yesterday. I, my body just felt weird. And I was like, and so it was the same day that the chicken sandwich, I mean, you know, so I'm like, okay, God, what's going on here? And that's when I just pulled back from everybody and just meditate. I said, God, something is going on. I'm telling you, after I ate that chicken, it's something, it just, my body just didn't. Now here's, and I'm going to tell you something that an old woman taught me, what to do to purify your body and detox you. A little bit of orange juice and a lot more apple cider vinegar will actually, it's a, it's a, um, it'll remove all the toxins from your body. And I felt better after I did that. I drank two glasses of that. So I started thinking, I said, God, this is deep. He said, Dana, you know, you already know. I'm, I get, I'm glad that a lot of you have actually circulated those videos to where, you know how they pump that chicken up with that stuff to make them bigger? Well, that stuff is real. So I said, okay, God, now I got to rethink everything. The way I prepare food, what I prepare. Do I even want to eat meat again? I, I'm just being real with you because I used to be a vegan. And I'm really, and, and I'm just going to be real with you. I'm really thinking about going back vegan. I, I, I don't, you see, thank you, Lord, I hear you. God says, my people perish for lack of knowledge, but not just lack of knowledge, lack of obeying, because we want what we want. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And I'm talking about they subtle, something as food. Come on, somebody, if you think 
that they just wanted y'all to have the perfect chicken sandwich because they love America, you are highly mistaken. That was strategic, and I promise you, that was an attack against Chick-fil-A. We already know that because it's Christian only. Do you understand what's really going on here? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So I'm saying count the calls. Always go to God, ask God about everything, and yes, about a chicken sandwich, because guess what? That's food going in your body, which is the temple of God. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. These people are not playing, you guys. They want to kill, steal, and destroy. Hallelujah. I'm just, and I'm not going to stay long on this subject because here's the deal what I've learned in my walk and my talk with God. Y'all going to do what y'all want to do anyway. I'm just the messenger. I'm just delivering it. Come on, somebody. But I always tell people, go back to God and ask God because we know when something's wrong. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And then it was so crazy because me and my sister was on the phone and she was like, I say, to me, it's like a form of crack cocaine. How can something be so good like that? That y'all actually standing in lines like that. That's almost like a drug was put in there. No, okay, let me go prophetic because I ain't got time to play games with y'all. That's exactly what God told me. He said, Dana, they put something in there that they can't even taste. And they body would want it more. Because you see, let me tell you something. If these people don't know anything, they know the makeup of the body. No, let me tell you how the elite roll because some of you ain't going to be able to understand what I'm saying. The elite roll like this. They get the people from the top universities, top Yale, Harvard. All, they get the most intelligent people. And what they do is they do research on us y'all want to know why some people disappearing y'all know why let me tell y'all and I, and I don't think i've ever shared this publicly and i'm very serious and i thank god because i didn't even i wasn't even serving god but the gift was in me uh my daughter was about maybe six or seven years old i will never forget this day we was in abbeville louisiana and the way my grandmother lived we stayed with my grandmother um the bus stop was across the street and so usually after I put on the bus and it was seven o'clock that morning, I'm not going to lie. I usually go back and lay down that day. I kept walking back and forth and I said, God, you know, no, I didn't say God because I wasn't living for God. But you know what I'm saying? I'm, I guess, you know, but anyway, let me continue the story. And I'm telling you that third time I went, I saw this car. It was two Caucasian guys. And I was, I was so proud of my baby. She got a strong mama. She had that book sack and she was just fighting them off. And I, I, I ran outside and I'm running. And I said, I said, fight them off, baby, till I get there. It was two Caucasian men trying to steal my baby. Hallelujah. And I was what? I was young. I was about, what, maybe 30, maybe 27, 28. No, I'm about 30, I think. Well, long story short. I, I I was trying to I was trying to stop him. I was running up that car because I couldn't catch it. But I show and I'm gonna tell the truth. I bust that back window out. I grabbed the bottle. Yes, I'm gully like that. Whatever. Talk about me if you want. And so long story short, I never forgot that day. I never forgot that day that my baby. Of course, she never rode the bus after that. Period. You understand what I'm saying? Call it fear. Call it what you want. That scared me. I said, Lord, you know, when I thought about that, and He brought that back into my life. I said, Lord, thank you. But now you know what I thought about just the other day when I, when I was telling the story to my friends about what happened to my daughter, what, what almost happened to my daughter. Did they get somebody else that day? Y'all ain't ready for me because it was early in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning. Did they to pick up another child? Because I still, I'm telling you, God was with my daughter because I, that little girl was small, and I'm telling you, y'all, she was just, she was just doing, she, she was fighting off with her books at. And the thing is, if you'd have known how heavy those books back in the day was, I don't know how she did that, but God. And all I'm saying is, y'all don't understand why people disappear. Because I'm about to say something, and it's gonna mess you up, but it's true. I've seen a compound where they store people, and they actually do the same thing they've been doing since World War II. The guinea pigs. Now, I have to say some hard things. If you do not believe me, that's fine. Go to God, ask God for confirmation, ask God to show you if your heart can take it. They stealing kids for pedophiles, trafficking, and sacrificing. They still sacrifice. You see, uh, America wasn't built on what you think it was built on. They still believe in Pharaoh. It's a pharaoh system, so don't play. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. They sacrifice to the God of Molech, M-O-L-E-C-H. They're still doing the same thing. Y'all notice that more kids are getting sacrificed? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. The adults, they, they run gu guinea pigs out of them because they don't need them for nothing else. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. They're not going to use them for sex tracking, especially if they're older. So they got them in these compounds. I don't know where they're at. I just see them. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And it's not crazy. It's not. It's not happy because if, if once they finish with them, you know they kill them, right? So you understand what's happening here? We have a feral, satanic system 
That's why God says spiritual wickedness in high places. He ain't talking about just heaven. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He says spiritual wickedness. They got no wickedness in heaven, but they do on earth and underneath earth. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So God is trying to wake up his remnant, his people, and say, open your eyes. The devil is among you. The devil is trying to steal, kill, and destroy. That's why we're supposed to be praying for our youth. You know, as a matter of fact, it's so crazy because I'm about to tell you something. And again, we're just talking. I got offered a job at a college here. As a matter of fact, they, they keep offering me, if you understand what I'm saying, good money to teach, um, to be a chef, to teach culinary. Do you know I turned that down? And guess what I'm going to do today? I'm going to go back into the school system because that's where I'm needed. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. You see, I'm first an apostle before I'm a chef. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm so tired of the enemy stealing our kids. I'm tired of them killing each other. I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of it. And when you have an anointing, every place you step, the atmosphere has to change. Come on, somebody. You better understand and understand your authority and use your authority. It does say the Lord because y'all don't know how to use your authority. Every place you step. It should change. Not because you're so great, but what's inside of me is great. God, the spirit of God. Hallelujah. The presence of God. The fire of God. The anointing of God. Hallelujah. Break yokes and burdens. And stop devils right there in their track. Hallelujah. This stuff is real. This ain't no game. And God is calling you. Come up. Come up in warfare. Come up. I, I, that's why the enemy is after our anointing. Because he know with no anointing, you ain't got no power. But if you have the anointing of God, then you can summon God. God, I need you. Just like Jesus did. Just like he woke up the little girl. He said, rise. Hallelujah. The only reason we're not seeing those same miracles is because the church is not teaching on them. Because to be honest with you, most are tainted. And that it's not to bash nobody. It's the truth. You keep touching the unclean thing. You keep fornicating. You keep lying. You keep stealing. You keep running after money. And your heart is not for God. Our hearts are supposed to be God's. That's why I said the heart is the most deceitful thing. Because it'll make you think that you're serving God. When in reality you're serving yourself and the devil. Come on somebody, hallelujah. This stuff real. Let me tell you what else God said. Because for some of you that are going through. I got a lot of subjects. I'm just going to put them all together. God uses the enemy to train you. A lot of you are going through some warfare. A lot of you are going through with family members. Even with your spouses. Let go and let God. Because let me tell you something, you're not understanding why God is allowing that. Let me tell you something, you're being trained. Oh, come on, somebody. The Bible says in Psalm 23, I bless you in the presence of your enemies. I, I, I used to get mad. I ain't gonna lie, I used to get mad. I said, they don't know me, they don't know me. I used to be blah, blah, blah. Come on, somebody. And then God said, damn, now you know you can't roll that way. I said, well, what am I gonna do? He said, this is how you do. You get anointed and you pray. He said, because guess what? You fight in the spirit. Hallelujah to his name. And so here, here's the deal. Here's the, that's why the enemy is trying to stop you. So I used to get mad when I had a lot of enemies. Now I welcome it because I know in the presence of my enemies, things going to shift. In the presence of my enemies, I'm going to get blessed. And I, that doesn't mean just monetary. That means that the atmosphere has to change. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You are shift changes. Put that in the comments. You are shift changes. If you are not shifting a change, then it is shifting you. This stuff real. You ever notice when you get in an environment, either two things that happen, you will change that environment or it will change you. Some of you are complaining about your situation. Can I tell you something? You shouldn't be in that situation. You should be praying so hard, praying so hard that the spirit of God, I hear you, God. Do you remember when Paul and Silas was in jail? Oh, come on, somebody. And they started, they started singing and everybody got freed. That's the same power that we have today. All you got to do is, is call on his name, glorify him. Your praise is your weapon, God says. A lot of you, you're complaining, you're murmuring, you're getting mad, you're cussing, you're fussing. That ain't going to do nothing. God do not respond to that. But what he do respond to is praise. Oh, there she go. Oh, there he go. He's praising his way through. Hallelujah. He's praying his way through. Hallelujah. He's fasting his way through. Hallelujah. I know the enemy looks like he's winning. But if you think that God is going to let him win, then you are mistaken. Because God says, I'm the Alpha, I'm the Omega, I'm the beginning, I'm the end. Is there anything too hard for me? Because I am God and God alone. As a matter of fact, let me tell you what he told Pharaoh. He heartened Pharaoh's heart. Notice what I said. He heartened Pharaoh's heart. He said, I made you for this day. Oh, come on, somebody. Let me tell you something. I'm trying to encourage you. When you get around your enemies, when you see your enemies trying to do you in, just think of it. God made you for this day. 
and therefore you shall win. Because let me tell you what God was doing. God was training Moses. God said, I'm a heart and Pharaoh heart so I can show Moses my power. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You don't hear me? Because even after when they was gone, he said, you, you can go, you can go. And then God split the race. See, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Pharaoh thought he was going to cross. That's when God said, enough. Hallelujah. What am I saying? It's going to come a time when God tell your enemies, enough. Hallelujah. But you got to believe and receive and stand, thus said the Lord. Hallelujah. We don't have enough people standing. And let me tell you nothing. If you're in sin, you can't stand because sin is weighing you down. I didn't say be perfect, but strive towards perfection. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Number two. God told me to talk about three, four things on here. Fleshly attire in the church. Y'all need to stop. You just need to stop. I don't care what you say. We all know right from wrong. You all know good, bad. You all know evil and good. Stop lying to your stuff. Stop playing that game. You're nasty. You just nasty. You just nasty and you're lustful. That's the only time you're going to wear something like that in church to tempt a man or woman of God per se. Stop that God say going into his house any kind of way. I know the Bible says come as you are. Do you know what he mean by that? Come as you are. He ain't say dress provocative, showing your breasts, legs, and thighs. You're trying to catch somebody. Stop playing. And men wearing them tight pants, showing the print of your you-know-what. You're trying to catch something. Come on, somebody. That's a curse upon a curse. How can you go into the house of God and act any kind of way and think God won't backlash you? It's coming, baby, sooner or later. Stop playing with God. Stop playing with God. Just like if you're on a pulpit. If you're in a pulpit, you know dog on you're supposed to wear a robe or something. What's wrong with you? Hallelujah. But 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 this new age church, y'all do what y'all want to do, how y'all want to do it. And God gonna get you. He told me to tell you he gonna get you. Just wait for it. And that's real. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, yes, that's real. All right, this subject, I don't know if y'all gonna like it, but it's it is what it is. Women, you must be submission. Let me tell you something. I'm an apostle, I'm a strong woman of God, but I don't go before men. I've never tried to act like I was a man. I've never tried to urse up a man, the authority over a man. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Women, that that independent stuff is killing your spirit of submission, thus said the Lord. Women, God made man the head. You are the tail. Sorry in the story. Stop it. Stop acting like you're a man. You are not a man. As, as a matter of fact, even on Father's Day, y'all want to talk about, well, I, I, I'm, no, 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 you're not. Don't you understand what God is saying? There's disorder, and so God is, is trying to put order back in place. We got women that are bishops. Clearly, it says, he must possess that office. And I, I, I love a couple of them that are, but you out of order. I don't care who you are. It could be me. I didn't even want to be an apostle while y'all sitting up there talking about women supposed to be. I didn't even want to. Heck, I didn't even want to be a prophet. But when God says something, it's real. But them scriptures is real too. Y'all sitting up there doing what y'all want to do, how y'all want to do it. And y'all wondering why it's a mess out there because it's a mess in the church. The spirit of the Antichrist is in the church. Deceiving. There's a spirit of divination to where it looks like God, it sounds like God, but it ain't God. Hallelujah. Because when it's God, God is a God of order. And I know that I'm I'm unorthodox and I'm radical. But one thing about Apostle Dixon, I'm in order. And there will be order wherever I'm at or I ain't in it. I have left up out of churches because there's no order. I don't play. Don't play with God. Don't you see the enemy have came in and everything that God has set in order, he has taken out of order on purpose. That's why you see the lust coming up. That's why you see the homosexuality. And I'm up to talk about that too. God says a man with a man and a woman with a woman. I know that there are some good people, but you're just nasty and lustful. That's a spirit. That's a spirit. That's a spirit. I was born that way. You lie. You lie. Because God said, what I made, I looked around and saw that it was good. That is a perverse spirit. Hallelujah. I'm not bashing the person, but the sin is not of God. Hallelujah. Stop lying and playing. And then y'all got the nerve to want to be in a pulpit 
And all you're doing is spewing that stuff to everybody that you're speaking to. And now God has to backlash you sooner or later. As a matter of fact, he told me, remember Sodom and Gomorrah. That was the number one sin that took out Sodom and Gomorrah. They were so nasty. They wanted to sleep with the angels. Now, who want to sleep with the angel? I mean, the angel just glowing. And yeah, you're talking about, ooh, he's sexy. So you know that's the spirit of perversion. I'm just saying. My God, my God, my God. So that's all God told me to talk about today. And I'm going to tell you something. I got to say this. I got to say this. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Whew. I know you don't have to always agree with what I say. I just say go to God. But I will put this warning out here. And, I, and listen to me very clearly. Because one thing I noticed, the ones that don't like you, the witches and the warlocks that follow you, Y'all listen to almost every video trying to find something, trying to seek, trying to destroy. God told me to tell you, back up off me. I'm too anointed. See some of that nasty stuff that y'all leave, some of that nasty stuff that y'all say? It does not faze me. I pray for you because God says pray for your enemies. But that's a dangerous thing because when I pray for you, then God has to get you. And that, that, that's, that's not a threat. That's a promise. Look in the Bible. Look in the Bible. Y'all going to stop playing with men and women of God one day. I don't know when it's going to be, but it's going to be one day. Because one day God going to get you. And that's a promise. That's not a threat. That's a promise. He said, touch not my anointed. That's anybody, not just prophets. And do my prophet, my, my, my ownership no harm. You don't get to talk to me any kind of way. You don't get to treat me any kind of way. You don't get to treat anybody any kind of way. That's God's. And some of y'all have lost your mind. But we know that's an antichrist spirit. Stop playing with men and women of God, y'all. If you have a problem with a person, this is, the, this is the protocol. What you're supposed to do is go to God. And God gonna get them. I don't care if it's me. Come on, somebody. I don't care if it's me. God gonna get me. You ain't got to worry. Because he don't let nobody slide. But it is a way to do things, thus said the Lord. Hallelujah. So God bless you. God keep you. And I'm telling you, the hunt is on. They after us. They trying to kill us all. I'm telling you. Because the whole thing is depopulated. The whole thing is they don't like Christians. Y'all do know that, right? As a matter of fact, every true Christian, God says prepare yourself. It's coming. And I think y'all all know it. Don't be afraid. For Christ we live, and for Christ we die. So glory be to God, this is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Roll our soldiers, for that is who we are. God bless.